Righto, welcome back to the 40 channel. Now before we get into anything, I'd like you guys to subscribe. I want to try to get those numbers up, see how we go. Anyway, now that I've thrown out my little sales pitch, today we're going to look at uh, pulling apart the freewheeling hubs and uh, stripping this right down. Mine's a Warlin. Um, should be fairly similar to some of the others, but let's see how we go. Let's get into that. I've got a bit to learn about this 40. First thing we want to do is we want to try to minimize our movement to make things a lot easier when we're pulling things apart. So all we're going to do to make my life a bit easier is I'm just going to clamp that into place. Right, uh, the very first thing you want to do before you do anything else besides locking it in place is make sure that you're in the free position. If you're not in the free position it's going to be pretty difficult to uh, get apart and it's, it's going to make a bit of a mess. So, and then we can start taking off the front cover. That's pretty yucky. Anyway, let's clean all of that up. Right now we're going to remove the hub body, 13 mil. These don't have uh, cone washers. These have just some uh, little star, some little star interlocking washers. So what happens is they just interlock two into each other. All right, so now we want to get off the hub body. You can use a dead blow hammer. Either way, don't go and use a um, a ballpoint hammer. Just slowly tap, pull that off. This is the driver side one. This one has Phillips head screwdriver bits in it, not Allen keys, which is probably the original. The uh, other problem is it's actually missing a couple. Stripped out some heads on one, missing another one. Uh, so we'll pull this one apart. Hopefully it won't have too much dramas. Let's try to get a bigger screwdriver on these ones that have got stripped out heads. Just to get them undone. I'm actually feeling pretty lucky that these are actually coming undone. You see the head on that one? It's pretty shagged. Uh, now we've got an issue here. Feels like the thread is actually stripped inside. It just keeps spinning around and around. So we're probably going to have to uh, helicoil that one, I say. You can see that came straight out. That's actually really, really dry compared to the other one. The other one was nice and greased up. No grease on this sucker. And you can see, I don't know if you can, this hole here is uh, totally stripped out. No thread left in it. I don't know, we can't really see in there very well, but we've got a, um, we've got a circlip. The passenger side was actually missing this circlip. So you get the circlip, pull that out. Now we should be able to slide that off. So that was concerning that the other side was missing the circlip. Right, now let's clean all the hub bodies up. Industrial degreaser, we'll give that a hit. A really good soak. Just try and clean some of this crap out. Pull that gasket off. Right, you can see there's a circlip on the back. This has like the, uh, I'm going to call it the inner spline gear. We'll just take that off. And there it is there. So there's your inner spline gear. And there's a, sh a shim. So we want to make sure we keep that little shim. It's so we can clean it all up, put that back together. Right here, you can see when you turn to engage four-wheel drive, what actually happens here 
is it this screws out see it's screwing it out to lock in and engage the hub into four-wheel drive and it's already lying on this roll pin just here so it moves up and down that to stop it from spinning so what we want to do is we're going to pull that roll pin out turn that back out with that roll pin removed we can unscrew that We have another circlip on the back. That'll slide apart. Got a shim that sits on the back there, or a washer. Keep that washer. What we have in here is a literally small little ball bearing with a little spring behind it, we don't want to lose that and an o-ring take that o-ring off we'll see what that o-ring looks like looks pretty good, it's not squashed or flat you want to make sure that that o-ring is not squashed and flat otherwise you want to get a new o-ring you see that little tiny ball bearing there that little ball bearing sits in these little indents so you can actually feel it when it sits into two-wheel drive when you spin it around you can actually feel it lock into the 4x4 indent if you guys have a part washer you're going to find this a stack easier to clean this out just using a small paintbrush to try and dig all this grease out always find uh, kids bed sheets to be the best rags just don't tell the kids the reason why you want to clean everything up so well is you're just looking for any any issues so if there's any damage to the threads any damage to the splines or the gears if there's any bits missing any o-rings washers circlips if any of those things are missing you're going to find them after you've cleaned all the grease away so it might look like I'm being quite meticulous but by doing this I can check every, all the threads make sure that they're all okay and clean and there's a couple little burrs and stuff you'll be able to feel them and you'll be able to just clean them up if they're, uh, if they're too bad besides that just looks good when you've cleaned everything up well okay we've got a bronze bush in here so again we want to check to make sure that there's no damage, no burrs no wear and tear on that just clean off all the old gaskets and then you'll be able to clean this surface up with a scotch bright pad make sure there's no burrs or marks or indents because um, if there is then your gasket's going to have trouble sealing Righto, we want to inspect every spring, make sure there's no broken springs, make sure they all sort of sit down nicely. You can, you'll be able to feel if one of them has lost its tension. They're all pretty good. This was a side that didn't have the gasket, so they've just filled it all up with gasket goo. Try and clean all that out. So we've got new gaskets for it obviously it didn't work too well because it was full of sand and rubbish right this seal here fits in the uh, freewheeling hub cover so we want to pull that out and it actually has like a little split in it so we can give that a really good clean and inspect that get all that right out of that real fine real fine gap there where that square seal sits you want to clean all this out as well clean out your little indents where your ball bearing locks in for two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive
But uh, so my small thin shim washers. Just gonna hit them with some um, some wax and grease remover. And what I'm gonna do next after I've cleaned them up, it's got some light surface rust all over it. Because it's so thin, I'm not really game enough to hit it with uh, a wire brush or a wire wheel. So I'm actually gonna try a product that you've seen me use before. So it's this uh, rust remover, you just soak it in. Well, before and after. Anyway, we're gonna see how good it is. It worked really, really well in the past. So we'll see how it goes with these little, um, these little things. So we're just gonna give it a really good clean up. I can't find a rebuild kit that has any of these in it. All the rebuild kit seems to have, which is even difficult to find, I can't even find them in Australia, is um, some gaskets. No O-rings, no circlips, nothing. So we will see how we go with um, rebuilding it all ourselves. Yeah, I've used this a couple times before. It says you can keep reusing it, so I've just kept it in. So we'll just sit them in, just drop them in here. We'll come back to that in a little while. See how that goes. Again, this is, uh, you can't find this O-ring. Well, I can't find it. I'll get this completely rebuilt and I'm sure one of my viewers will say, hey, we sell it. I need uh, the O-rings and stuff. I need to find it in Australia, otherwise the cost of getting it from the States, I might as well replace the entire hub with a different brand. That's how expensive it is to ship from the States. It's crazy. Righto, so it's been uh, about two and a half hours. Let's give this a bit of a moment of truth. That one there has come up awesome. It's pretty happy with that. I've right, just been down to Toolking because we want to uh, want to make these look blingy, bring them up, make them look pretty special. So we've got uh, some cleaning and polishing and depurring pads. Now these guys have uh, they've got got a thousand. 600, 400, 320. So we'll um, give these a go and see what it comes up like, eh? Start with 320. Amazing. I think if we go down a few grades, we can get that really to polish up quite nicely. And we'll repaint inside, and uh, it'll come up beautiful, I reckon. Uh, we're just going to clean up some of these threads. This thread here is uh, totally stripped out, so it's gone. Now these are three sixteenths. It's the only Imperial threads on my entire cruiser that I'm working on. And uh, lucky for me, this was my grandfather's. And my grandfather's uh, left me with all these taps and dies, and it's pretty cool actually. So we, uh, we have a three sixteenth here, so we're going to take that. We're going to run the tap down, we're going to clean them up, and then we're going to try and um, then we're going to fill this hole and re tap it. And we're going to do something a little bit different, I think, to make that happen, just so we can get some, some purchase on that. Anyway, let's clean up these holes. Right, so here's the plan for the uh, the hole that's totally stripped out. There's a uh, 3 16th bolt, as you can see, it just slips straight in out. So we're just going to use some of this epoxy, some of this epoxy putty. Now this stuff is is pretty awesome. It actually says right here on the label, world's strongest bond. 
and I'm expecting it to say 007 after that. But anyway, that's their claim. But this stuff does go rock hard. It's very impressive. We'll mold it up. We'll jam it in the hole. And then we'll drill and tap it out. And we'll see how we go. So here's our hole that we filled up with our epoxy putty. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to have a really, really, really light draw file over the top. Knock any high spots off. There's a few that have been knocked around. And mainly we want to make sure that there's no high spots on that epoxy putty. Nice and light. Put our cover on and we'll just put our new bolts in. Don't want to do them up too tight. We're just nipping these up just to hold the cover on so that we can now put this in the uh, drill press and we can drill and tap, or at least we can drill this out and we can take the cover back off and we can tap this hole back out to our 3 sixteenths UNC. Okay, with our hub in the drill press, I've got a five mil drill. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just drill down just to the top of this landing here on the five mil drill. And all that's gonna do is help me center it into the correct position and give me a small little pilot to drill with our tapping drill, which will be about a 3.7 if you've got it, otherwise a 3.6 will be pretty close. Right now we've got a 964th drill in here and we're actually going to drill all the way down. Now this drill technically is just a little bit too small for the tap, but that's okay. The putty's pretty soft, alloy's pretty soft, the tap will have no trouble going through this. So we're going to drill this hole through and then we'll be able to run the tap down it. Right now, let's take that cover back off. Right now, you can see our new hole that we're going to we've got there that we can tap out now. I'm going to go back to my grandfather's taps. As far as I know, my grandfather didn't smoke tobacco. What he did do, he wrote down every tap that he had and put it in uh, in these little boxes. There they are there. Now all we need to do is find our um, 3 16 tap. There's a little note from my grandfather. That's nice. There we go. So 3 16 UNC. That is exactly what we need. So uh, we'll use that to um, to tap it out. into my grandfather's tap wrench as well. It's nice to know that uh, I get to use my grandfather's tools on some of this stuff. All right, let's just go nice and easy here. Take that tap out. Now I actually let this putty set for about three hours. Now for the ultimate test. That's fantastic. That screws in pretty tight. Right, so we ended up repairing this hole with a bit of uh, epoxy putty. Came up pretty good. Now I would totally recommend if you had the opportunity to use helicoil set, use it. But I had to improvise. 
and um, it's going to work pretty well. All these holes are in really good condition. I thought that some of them more would be stripped out, but luckily we only had one damaged hole and we're able to make that work. So really happy. So let's clean this up, make it look pretty special. Pretty happy with that. It's come up nice, really nice. So the rebuilding of this worn hub has turned into a much bigger project than I thought it would. I thought I'd be able to pull the hub off, give it a quick clean up, strip it down and um, replace any bits that I need with these. Unfortunately, I live in Australia and the, uh, the worn hubs, um, well they originally came out of the States. So it's pretty difficult to get uh, rebuild kits and uh, service kits for them. Well, they don't get them here at all in Australia. So I had to make up my own service kit and I had to chase up from, uh, ended up going to four different suppliers, uh, bearing shops, so I applied for bearing shops and uh, seals, O-rings. So I went and got my O-ring kit from those guys. Uh, Brake Pro, they hooked me out with um, snap rings and um, had to go to a, my local nut and bolt shop to get um, some stainless steel 3 16 UNC uh, cap nuts. Uh, so, ended up making my own rebuild kit and service kit for the worn hub. So I was able to find this on the uh, Mighty Web. And from that I was able to figure out what I needed. So we got... Uh, so 3 16 UNC, stainless steel, brand new circlips, new snap rings because uh, there was one missing on mine already, new O-rings, quad rings, the shims I uh, cleaned up, I soaked them in some uh, rust remover and gave them a bit of a polish up, new gaskets, front and rear, and uh, as well as some um, new roll pins as well. And then just uh, cleaned everything else up. So every other component I cleaned up and inspected, made sure that they were okay. And I think we'll be okay. Anyway, they'll be good enough for this rebuild. We'll put it all back together. 
and we'll have a brand new worn hub set up. Let's get this freewheeling hub back together. Let's get our quad ring first. A quick wipe, make sure it's clean. Just gonna rub a little bit of grease. Same grease that we're gonna use for the uh, entire wheel knuckles when we actually get to that stage. I thought we would have been there by now, but unfortunately we're not. All right, so we greased up our quad ring. Put our quad ring in to the front cover. We'll have a bit of grease around all these surfaces here, all these metal mating surfaces. Make sure you haven't lost this little tiny ball bearing. That's pretty important. Actually, it's extremely important, so don't lose that. We're going to get an O-ring. I'm going to drop that O-ring. A little bit of grease too. The O-ring over the thread. Work it all the way down. And we're just going to put a little bit of grease all around here. Just help lubricate everything. It'll stop the O-rings getting pinched or damaged as well as we put it all back together. I'm going to drop it into the uh, free position. Just, you'll feel that, that little ball bearing lock in. You can see the O-ring sits there. Now we've got our little shim. Again, we're going to grease that up too. I like grease. It's my friend. Drop the shim on. Now we're going to screw the actual um, locking mechanism on. So this is the part when you turn it from two wheel drive to four wheel drive, this comes in and out gear, which is on the spline of your CV. And that engages the hub. Right, so now we've got our shim down. What we need to do next, get one of our circlips. Circlip. These circlip pliers are a little bit small for this job, but it'll still do it. Just do a bit more wrestling. So now that circlip's in place, we can actually give it a bit of a run. Make sure it's all going to turn well. Locks into four. Locks back into two. That's all held in place now. Now this is a left hand thread. Now what we're going to do is we want to screw it down all the way. And then we're just going to come back one one point, I'll show you on the other one. See, we've got these little tiny holes here. Okay, that's where our, our roll pin will go into one of these little holes. So that's a locating hole for the uh, roll pin. So we're going to screw this all the way down, left hand thread. And we're just going to screw it back until one of these holes, one of these tabs with the holes, line up. with the nearest hole. And then what we can do is get our new roll pin. All right, let's try and get our roll pin lined up with this locating hole. Try and hold it in with some pliers. We need like five hands to do this. And get our pin punch. It's all on spring, so you can move all that out of the way to make things a bit easier. Which is what I'm trying to do. Right, so that's locked into position. Let's make sure. Let's make sure that we turn from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive. And you'll actually see what happens here in the back. Whereas we move it forward and backwards, it's screwing on the thread to engage 
onto the shaft. We'll just grease that up a little bit, drop our shim over the top. This drops straight through, there's a bronze bush through in there. Okay, now we need to put the circlip on that. I'm just going to use whatever you can get just to hold it in place. Otherwise it, it'll just keep falling through and it'll become frustrating. Circlip. Circlip's on. All held into place. And that's it. When we go to rebuild the uh, the front knuckle and we'll put it all back together, that'll all go together nicely. We'll put all of the gaskets on, bolts on, and you can see if we turn this over, you see that spins freely. Okay. Now if we engage that. The springs are on it. I'll hold that down to position. That's locked in. So I can't turn that. So we know that everything's engaged, everything's working for well. Success. Right, eh? So that's a freewheeling hub by Warn, fully rebuilt. Now I ran into some dramas because there was bits missing um, and I couldn't buy a, re a rebuild kit. In Australia so as you saw bought new seals new o-rings new snap rings new circlips um, all the other components it was just a bit of a bugger running around chasing them all up but the end component is sensational I'm super happy with it you can see it there complete and it's ready to go back on when I finally get around to building the knuckle Anyway guys, I really appreciate your support. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, give a thumbs up, leave a comment, and I'll see you next episode. Good on you.